So it's confession time and today's confession and to the first smart speaker of the week goes to Sweet Caroline. Mm. Good evening to you, Sweet Caroline. Father Simon, merciful Matt, and holier than thou, Holly. Oh, yeah. Hello. It's true. Yeah, absolutely. I request to be known by the pseudonym of Caroline. I never was sweet, so I might as well pretend just for once in my life. This confession goes back around 45 years. Wow. I was a rough and scruffy young girl from the Grotbags council estate in Leicester. These are all her words, by the way. <laughs> okay. And I'd been fortunate enough to answer quite a lot of the questions on the 11 plus correctly. So many, in fact, I was accepted in, into the St. Custard's Grammar School for Gals. Well, young ladies were reminded frequently that they were indeed the creme de la creme, as this was the most prestigious school in the Shire. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you know where you are. On one particular day, a nice sunny lunchtime, as I recall, myself and two gal pals, let's call them Gulab and Diana, mm. were taking a stroll around the enclosed courtyard, because it's a school that has an enclosed <laughs> courtyard, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. when we spotted some unusual activity in one of the disused changing room areas that was currently the site for some electrical work. Ever inquisitive, we headed over to find out what the jolly hockey sticks was going off. Halfway along the very long, narrow corridor, we were met with a closed door. When we tried to open it, the door was held firm from the other side, and Mauler Mavis, prop forward, told us to clear <laughs> off. And if Mauler Mavis tells you to clear yeah, off, yeah. you clear off pretty quickly. Now, fear, Father Simon, wasn't in my dictionary, but I knew that I had no chance of getting that door open with Mavis blocking it. There was clearly something going on, and even though we didn't know it at the time, FOMO was gnawing at me. We'd never heard of the phrase, no. obviously. No. The fear of missing out, we were desperate. As we slinked back along the corridor, I spotted above the benches to the right was a square opening with pitch darkness behind. A tunnel? Quick as a flash, <laughs> I jumped no. up on the benches and peered into the hole. There was a void behind. Its floor was about four feet off the ground. It was about two and a half feet high and five feet wide. This is where the unseen gubbins for a big building went. Pipes and cables, electricity and so on. It was obviously being used by the electricians for access. Uh -huh. They could crawl down there. As I peered into the hole, I could see light entering it further down the corridor, so assumed this would be a way to bypass Mauler Mavis. Prop forward. Yeah. As I think I mentioned. Mm. In you go, I said to Gulab, who said, One is not going in there. <laughs> she did actually sound like the Queen. Did she? Mm. In you go, I said to Diana, who said, It's, it's, it's very dark. She was scared. With nobody prepared to go over the top, it was down to me. Up I scrambled, and with two sets of eyes watching behind me, I crawled along the inspection tunnel, for that is what it was, towards the light further along. As I crawled along through the rubble and dust in the tunnel, by the way, you're guaranteed not going to be guessing where she's heading. Okay. I hadn't realised just how dirty and filthy I was getting. When I finally approached the next open hatch, I could hear voices and eventually was able to see what was happening. A group of about half a dozen girls... No, Go on. No. ...had a Ouija board. Oh. oh! They were having a seance and were asking repeatedly, Is there anyone there? <laughs> I managed to stifle a laugh and then noticed by the light coming into the hatch that my hands were very, very grey and dusty and indeed deathly. Ah. So I couldn't help myself. It just happened, Father Simon. I reached out of the hatch into the room with a deathly grey hand held in a claw fashion and gave a deep groan. Oh, it's a deep groan. I'm just yeah, performing yeah, a groan yeah, yeah, in yeah. case you don't know what a deep groan sounds like. <laughs> yeah. oh. There were screams. The entire room vacated in a microsecond. Some returned when they saw Gulab and Diana standing grinning at the far end of the corridor as they put two and two together. However, one girl in particular, let's call her Maria, was quite literally hysterical and was in the common room on her knees, jabbering as many Hail Marys and Our Fathers as she could get through with sobs and trembling lips. I had to go and admit to her that it was me, otherwise she'd have not been here to this very day, I suspect. 
Father Simon and Matt and Holly, no chance there. I do not seek forgiveness for Maria. If she believed in that stuff, she shouldn't have been dabbling anyway. Anyway, I let her have a couple of free shots to make it up to her. Not that she could punch away out of a paper bag. <laughs> but this is the way. Go on, have a go. Go on. But I ask forgiveness for all the people in the common room trying to have a quiet study period or relaxed break who were disturbed by the hysterical Maria and forgiveness for my poor old mum who had to wash my filthy school uniform. Uh, yours, uh, not so sweet, Caroline. Well, very good. Thank you, not so sweet, Caroline. I haven't had a Ouija board confession uh, for a long time. Anyway, uh, I suspect uh, Sister Holly is going to be very disapproving. No, no, really not impressed with this. Uh, the fact that they were, they were obviously fiddling around with Ouija boards, you thought it'd be fun to just scare them. No, why were you doing that? Why were you crawling around in a weird little tunnel, which was sounds like it was dangerous as well? The health and safety precautions out the window for this one so not very good for that also as well the poor mother the poor mother that had to wash the uniform and spend all that time because it must have been absolutely filthy from that disgusting tunnel so no not impressed not forgiving at all rather from another guy will no one think of the mothers doing them <laughs> will no one think of them um, I'm going to forgive here's why yes. I mean if you're going to have all these stars aligning where you get to be in that tunnel thing and you stumble across people and it just so happens they are doing one of the Ouija board which of us could honestly say we wouldn't do something like uh, Sweet Hello. Caroline and I think yeah, yeah she's me and there's my claw um, so I think we'd all do it and and I'm glad that Gar Caroline did and frankly they all deserve what was going if you don't want to get dabbling into the undead best not be dabbling into the undead so uh, and she got some free shots out of it even though she can't punch for toffee so for that reason I'm going to forgive okay alright that's the way it goes not so Sweet Caroline's uh, <laughs> spoiling of the Ouija session Anyway, does she get your forgiveness, please? Uh, uh, this is the people's verdict. 61054, first word is Simon. Fashion just before six came from a not-so-sweet Caroline. 45 years ago, she was a rough and scruff, but she was still going to St Custard's, the local top school. Uh, and she was blocked by Maula Mavis from entering a particular room. Uh, but she wasn't going to let that stop her, so she entered the inspection tunnel and peered into a scene of her classmates with a Ouija board. Very bad thing to do. And with her filthy and dusty hand, she poked it through the grill and made a groaning sound. Uh, they all scarpered. Maria was hysterical. Um, and then Maria had a, a free punch. <laughs> which yes. is obviously a very, very bad way of sorting out your differences. Obviously. So don't yeah. do that at home. Anyway, the people's verdict is in. Here it comes. So Lynn says, not forgiven. As Holly says, I feel sorry for the mother who had to wash all the uniform afterwards poor thing uh jess though says forgiven i'm sure most of us would have done the same thing just sorry i wasn't there to see it and jane in devon definitely forgiving we did something similar when i was in upper six silly girls deserved it is that right mm. okay so would you say that in general sweet caroline is forgiven uh, forgiven i think okay. yeah all right so you led the way, basically. Yeah, definitely. If you've got again. a confession, again, of course, <laughs> uh, we would love to see it. It's confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. Uh, 5.48. Today's confession, by the way, maybe not appropriate for people eating, but it's not not seriously oh. bad. Oh, not right. Not seriously one. Okay. bad. Come on over here. We've got a, a nice little story from Penny. Thank you, Penny. Father Simon, the ever-forgiving brother Matt, and the ever-unforgiving sister holly mm -hmm. my confession dates back to september 1968 when due to school terms starting in september and my birthday being in october i started school at the very young age of four this does happen and four is too young that's just my little okay <laughs> wow tutorial <laughs> I was very excited to start school and really wanted to do well, largely because my sister, who was six years older than me, was already doing well, top of the class. Yeah. You know. mm. We sat at tables of four children, and luckily for me, I was allocated the same table as my best friend, Tracy Seymour. We only lived a few doors from each other, so had grown up together. Our class teacher, Mrs. Boston, woman who was, to my young eyes, the size of a mountain... <laughs> And not a small British mountain, a proper Himalayan mountain. Mm. So therefore, I found her quite intimidating. She made clear to us that we were to make sure that we went to the toilet before school started and at break times. And she wouldn't be too impressed if lessons were interrupted due to us needing to pay a visit, as it used to be referred to yes. in the 60s. Unfortunately, says Penny, 
I had and still do have a rather weak bladder. And during the first couple of weeks at school, during morning class, I really needed a wee and knew I couldn't last till break time. Mrs. Boston was over the other side of the classroom, looming large over one of the other tables. I certainly didn't want to get into a bad book so early in my school years. I also noticed that my best friend, Tracy Seymour, was away from her desk, playing in the Wendy house. Looking round, no one was taking any notice of me, so I sidled over to Tracy's chair, and I had my wee there. Okay. <laughs> God! <laughs> to my surprise, it was quite a substantial one. <laughs> it puddled on the floor under the chair, oh. as well as there were many pools. All oh, right. I quickly nipped back to my own chair and continued with my <laughs> with my colouring in. Oh, what's happened there? Oh, dear. Trying to look unconcerned. Unfortunately, the peace and considerable relief. I felt didn't last long as Tracy came back to her chair and started shouting to Mrs. Boston <coughs> that her chair was all wet and all the floor was wet and her feet were wet as well. Oh. As you can imagine, quite a commotion ensued. Mrs. Boston clearly didn't believe Tracy's wide-eyed innocent act and protestations and sent her out of the classroom to have a little think about what she'd done. Mm -hmm. I continued with my colouring looking quite judgmental of my friend who had let herself down. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Boston's words, obviously. I did consider, albeit very briefly, owning up at this point in order to save my friend from the injustice that she was suffering. But I, I justified not doing so to myself because I felt I had suffered enough having to sit in wet knickers for the rest of the morning. In hindsight, I should probably have taken them down before I did the deed, but I've only just learnt such guile more recently, says Right. <laughs> okay. Yep. She did say she still has yes. yeah. a week better. Yeah. I therefore don't ask forgiveness from Mrs. Boston, as she could have been more understanding of a four-year-old. This is a four-year-old oh. with a weak mm. bladder. But I do ask forgiveness from my very best friend, Tracy, who remained my best friend for a few years after not knowing that it was me who got her into trouble, and also Mr. Clark, the school caretaker, who was summoned in with his mop and his metal bucket to clear the not inconsiderable uh, mess up. <laughs> I hope you will take into consideration my very young age and keenness to do well at school. You're seeking absolution. Uh, that'll be penny, as in spending a penny. I mean, that's obviously yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the reason for that. So, you see, this is a harmless... It's not victimless, obviously, because Tracy Seymour uh, suffered a lot. But, she, but, you know, Penny is four. And who of us could not say that at the age of four, we didn't have a we in the classroom? I don't think I did. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> of course you did. I'm going to say, I just think, I feel really sorry for Tracy in all this, to be honest. Also, when she realised it was a long one, why didn't she stop? No? You can't stop, can you? Where's you going? Can't you just, you start can't you just I mean, stop? Mid no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all? No. Um, and so I think, yeah, and for that reason, I just think poor Tracy, poor Mr. Clark, who had to clear it up. Definitely. She probably is traumatised for life, still thinks about it to this day, and for that reason, not forgiving. Okay, uh, brother from another. I mean, there are a number of reasons why I'm going to forgive here. Number one, uh, I mean, the gar, the guile to decide to do it on your best friend's chair. <laughs> well done for that. Uh, number two, it's the system again. The system is again. If Mrs. Boston is saying, uh, uh, I don't want any of that. Uh, you can't go to the loo during my lessons. Then guess what? This is going to happen. And you're going to need your caretaker with his mop on call all day. Because if you're not allowing kids to go to the loo that during your lessons, then guess what's going to happen all over your floor. Uh, but I'm definitely going to, mainly going to forgive just for the, the line, my judgmental colouring in. Fabulous line. <laughs> uh, definitely, definitely works for me. So yes, forgive me. I don't think you have a moral compass at the age of four. No. Not properly developed anyway. Anyway, let's, let's find out what you make of that. Uh, do you forgive Penny on the people's verdict, please? 61054. Just before the news, however, a shocking confession from Penny, who at the age of four, when she uh, she had an unforgiving primary school teacher, and instead of, she wasn't, wasn't allowed out for a week, so instead of doing a wee where she stood, which is what most four-year-olds would do, I think she did it on her best friend's chair, and let the best friend take the blame 
And after all these years, it's been hanging around since 1968. She's finally asking for forgiveness. The people's verdict is in like this. Yes, just about everyone's forgiving. Uh, Tim in Sutton says, of course forgiven. What a clever four-year-old. I'm sure her bestie would understand. I mean, it serves Mrs. Boston right. Penny was bursting anyway. Uh, Ruth says forgiven. I agree totally with Matt. It's definitely the system's fault. Completely forgiven. And Joey in Plymouth says forgiven. Simply for making me have to grab my mop and bucket and clear up the tea I've just spat out in laughter. If there is a confession that's nagging away, then send it to us. Confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk uh, to, if you have a Christmas confession, by the way, now is a good time to be asking for them, I suppose. Uh, Christmas confessions, very welcome. Confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. Today's comes from Chip. And as Matt says sometimes when we're doing the uh, sports quiz, wait until the very end. Oh, right. right. Dear Father Simon, Holly Holy and... Uh, Holy Holly. And Almighty Matt. My yeah. confession goes back to 2015 when I was on a work trip to California. As I arrived at my hotel in Los Angeles, I noticed a very large group of paparazzi, security guards and dozens of screaming girls gathered on the steps outside. The sort of thing I imagine Matt encounters when he arrives at Greatest Hits Daily. Mm. Daily. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It all looked very exciting, so I put on my shades, sauntered up the hotel steps, pretending they were there for me. It was great fun, until a burly man with a headset, grabbed me in my bags and shoved me into the lobby. Concierge told me a world-famous band was about to arrive, oh. so could I check in quickly and get out of the way? I was happy to oblige, and I headed to my room, ordered food, and called my family back home. I called my family back home. <laughs> yes, they were back home. Punctuation always yeah, very helps. Yeah. Uh, my kids were massively impressed that I was in the same hotel as this band, but not surprised that I had no idea who they were. They reminded me of the time I saw Ed Sheeran in the street and shouted, Look, boys, there's Ben Sherman. <laughs> <laughs> I am very, very uncool. Anyway, <laughs> I remember that next time. Yeah, I no, it's very good. I was jet-lagged, homesick, went to bed, ahead of a very, very busy day of meetings the next day, when suddenly at midnight all hell broke loose. Loud music started a thumping and a pumping. Girls started a whooping and girls and lads were hollering in the way that only Americans can. A full party had started outside my room. It started out the band and their large entourage had come back to the hotel for a late night after show party and they had booked all of the rooms on my floor apart from my room. Oh, what? There was no way I could sleep, especially when at one point a couple started getting to know each other very close to my bedroom door. Oh, this is not acceptable. Was... I called hotel reception, who apologised, saying I'd been put on the wrong floor. There was nothing they could do about it. Thanks. The noise was... <laughs> <laughs> the noise was so loud. I did consider going out into the hallway and shouting at everybody to keep quiet. But I'm quite poshly spoken and would have said something like, I say, excuse me, chaps, would you mind terribly off <laughs> telling the music off? It's a little bit of a racket. I can't hear the words. <laughs> um, they would have laughed at me for sure. The party went on, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., oh, no. 5 a.m., and by 6 a.m. I was beaten. I had a shower to freshen up, got ready for my day as I left my hotel room about half past seven. The band and their crew were finally retreating to their hotel rooms. When I got into my taxi for the day, I told my driver that a world-famous band I'd never heard of had kept me up all night partying right outside my room. I was exhausted. Taxi driver looked at me intensely, then came up with a brilliant plan for revenge. So here's the confession, and I'm sorry for being childish. As I knew all their room numbers, I called the hotel posing as the band's management, and I asked to be put through. Knowing they would all be fast asleep, the phone would be ringing for ages before a very unhappy voice would answer. I called all five of the rooms more, more than a dozen times, actually, throughout the day in between my meetings. And with the help of my taxi driver, we made a real impression. <laughs> As the day progressed, the band and their crew became very, very angry at being disturbed. In fact, it's fair to say they became extremely angry and very sweary indeed. Leave us alone, man, they said. <laughs> man. <laughs> you, uh, then a few yeah. choice words. They were furious, and frankly, Simon, I loved it. 
I also took the liberty of calling hotel room service and ordering them lots of food. All day I ordered pizzas, beers, burgers and chips, all to be delivered to the band who were trying to sleep. It must have driven them insane, like it had for me the night before. It was great fun and a genius idea from my driver. So, Father Simon. I wish to seek forgiveness for taking revenge in such a childish way. Had I been 30 years younger, I probably would have joined in the party. But I was old and grumpy then. In fact, I still am. I'm also sorry for running up a huge room service bill on their account. The account, in case you were wondering, of Maroon 5. Uh. <laughs> this world famous band were due to perform that night and they must have been exhausted I'm so sorry to the thousands of fans who were probably very disappointed at the very lacklustre performances thank you Father Simon keep up the forgiveness because that poor performance was all down to me says Chip uh, with today's rock and roll confession bad behaviour Sister Holly, what do you make of that one? Oh, gosh. I can totally understand why Chip was angry because the whole being sort of sleep deprived, I, I would have been very upset and I would have absolutely understood. All night? All night. Oh, that's bad. That's really bad. I, the thing that I'm... The reason why I'm not going to forgive this, though, is yes. because... They wasted a lot of food by ordering all that room service, you see. All those people made all that food, probably wasn't eaten, probably was just left there. And, you know, it, all of that effort. And so I think, you know, for that reason, that's why I'm not forgiving, Very actually. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, a brother from another. Uh, pretty much sure I'm going to be speaking for the nation here <laughs> when I say forgiven. Uh, who has a party till six in the morning? That's ridiculous. They were moving I, like I, Jagger, you know. I mean, they mm. were very much moving like the Jaggers. And, uh, not outside my hotel room, uh, getting, getting along famously. That's not, that's not on at all. Can you imagine? And, uh, imagine I mean, so I, 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 once it had gone past 11, I would have been out of that I door. I would have been out there, yeah. Hammering on those doors. Um, so yeah, not forget. Oh, what's the hotel doing here? Oh, sorry, you're on the wrong. You're on the wrong floor, and um, we've literally nowhere else to put you. It's the system once again working against our confessor. So and a lacklustre performance from the Maroon Five. Who'd have thought? Hmm. Uh, so I'm <laughs> going to say forgiven. Uh, it's the people's verdict. Please, do you forgive Chip for his rock and roll confession? Six one zero five four. First word has to be Simon. That is six one zero five four. First word is Simon for the people's verdict. However, just before the news, we had a, a confession from Chip, a rock and roll confession from California. How he was kept up all night by a parting rock and roll band who turned out to be Maroon Five. Anyway, he took out his revenge by calling them every so often along with his taxi driver and sending them food and that kind of thing the people's verdict is in here it comes and as i predicted everyone is forgiving big rob says forgiven i work security at a five-star hotel in london and if these nefarious activities had happened on my shift yes. then i wouldn't have forgiven that lot either ian in somerset says absolutely forgiven i work with bands such as this not this one traveling the world and trashing hotel rooms you get what you deserve and finally, Rich, Richard in Southampton says, Totally forgiven. Reminds me of the time that my dear old dad stayed in a hotel with a band. I asked him what they were called, and he said, Oh, something like a hundred haircuts. <laughs> I, so I would have imagined that haircut 100 would have been very well behaved. I'm sure they were. It I'm goes sure with a cardigan. Yeah. Uh, Nick Haywood, hello. So, uh, if you have a confession, maybe prompted and inspired by chips then send yours to confessions at greatest hits radio.co.uk christmas confessions that would be a very nice thing send them to confessions at greatest hits radio it's confession time uh, i know that because sister holly is in the house mm -hmm. already looking unforgiving that's the way it goes <laughs> is that your natural expression would you say oh Perhaps, maybe. Yes. <laughs> well, I would, that's Matt's opinion. Okay, well, Fiona, not my real name, says, Father Simon, Brother Matthew, and Sister Holly, I'm hoping for forgiveness for a burden of guilt I have carried for over 40 years. Wow. Back in the late 70s and early 80s, I was an assiduous and well-behaved student who attended an all-girl convent school. My friends and I were boarders, as most of us were from families, who often lived abroad because of work or service with the armed forces. It was just like Hogwarts, but without the magic. <laughs> <laughs> so a school. So not much fun then. <laughs> During the day, we attended lessons, learned home economics and played hockey. And in the evenings, we applied ourselves diligently to supervise study. 
We're only allowed to watch one TV programme a week, and we always voted for Top of the Pops. Very wise choice. Mm -hmm. But at the weekends, we're allowed a little more freedom. This freedom increased the older we got. The nuns trusted us because we were good, responsible girls. We used to walk to the local town to buy sweets, look at boys from afar, <laughs> that sort of thing. And this all worked. How, how racy can it possibly get? <laughs> this all worked quite well until a video shop opened in the aforementioned nearby town. We, who were by now the older girls, came up with the bright idea of starting a video club at the weekends. We requested and were granted an audience with Mother Superior, a suitably imposing matriarch, and asked for permission to open an account. Consent was graciously bestowed under the strict stipulations that we would hire just one video a week and that it would suit all boarders, the youngest being about 10. Okay, they're the rules. As you'll know, videos in those days were rated U, suitable for all ages, A certificate, uh, discretionary caution below 14, I think, double A, 14 and above, mm -hmm. or X, hello, adults only, mm. slash hello, <laughs> says. and it is important to remind ourselves and inform listeners born after 1990, hello Holly, looking at you, <laughs> that this meant something was actually enforced in those days. It was illegal to get something wrong here. There was no internet, no mobile phones or even computers, therefore no exposure to anything other than what was spoon-fed by parents and educators. The only experiences we gained of the grown-up world were the briefest glimpses of TV at home. On the rare occasions, we were allowed to stay up later than the also very strictly adhered to 9pm watershed. 9pm watershed is after 9 o'clock. You should show rude things. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep or adult themes. Right. We assured Mother Superior we would only watch U certificate family films suitable for all. The nuns would not have to worry about a thing. So if it's a U certificate, you're absolutely fine. What? <laughs> it's a huge jump now in the next paragraph. Okay. One day, however, we spotted The Exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes, it was an X certificate, but it had priests in it. <laughs> so <laughs> it had religious <laughs> ceremonies. How bad could it be? Yeah. It would be educational. Don't know what possessed us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we rented it and took it back to the boarders' common room, eagerly anticipating the evening's entertainment. <laughs> when the time finally came, we had a full house. So we got everyone squeezed in and we pressed play. Remember, there are juniors. <laughs> here. We pressed play on the VCR machine. The film started slowly and some of the younger ones were even losing interest. But then, as Reagan's head started spinning and the vomit and obscenities began flying, <laughs> the full horror of what we had done hit us. The little ones started whimpering. Soon others joined them and before long, half the common room was crying. Everyone, including us, was in shock. We felt awful. We even felt... More than that, we felt terrified as we knew what trouble we'd be in with Mother Superior. It quickly became obvious that we had to rise above the emotional distress and activate full self-preservation mode. So proceeded to employ the age-old carrot and stick strategy uh, ruthlessly. First, we turned the video off and comforted the traumatized group, which was itself no mean feat. Then, having regained a small semblance of sanity in the room, we begged them all not to tell on us, whilst at the same time, through a heavy layering of insinuation, allowed them to believe that they would be in deep trouble for having watched mm. such a video. Mm. As a coup de grace, we blamed the video rental and told them that the shop must have got the wrong video in the wrong box and because we <laughs> thought we were renting a Disney film. Ah. <laughs> Our tactics appeared to work as through solidarity or fear of reprisal or both, no one ever told on us, the nuns never found out and we were never punished. However, therefore, now is the time to seek forgiveness from those poor children, especially the younger ones. As previously disclosed, it was a time of innocence and effective censorship, and I hate to think what nightmares may have been invoked and long-term psychological harm caused that night. The, the, the news stories throughout the 70s were people fainting and b walking out of this film, so imagine seeing it as a primary school kid. But I also seek forgiveness from the nuns who trusted us so completely and allowed us a luxury they felt had been earned on merit of dependability. In our defence, I can't believe the video shop allowed us to take an X certificate video out when we were clearly not 18 or over. Also can't quite believe that the nuns didn't check what we were watching. 
I'm primarily ashamed that their trust was so misplaced. Uh, I await your judgment with a degree of trepidation. Yours hopefully, Fiona, not my real name, Sister Holly. Surely it had X on the box. Yes. It would have said the rating on the box. Yes. And so she should have seen this and should have thought, maybe this isn't for the children, you know, and including me. Maybe she should have thought that and she didn't think that through. I feel very sorry for the little children. Exorcist is considered really one of the scariest of all the horror films. And so watching that as a 10 year old really would be very scarring. And so for that reason, I'm just not going to forgive. Yes, uh, uh, fair enough, really. Uh, brother from another... I family. mean, so there are two things here. One, I don't buy for a moment that they didn't know that The Exorcist was going to be a bit of a, a trying movie for these kids. They knew what they were. They knew, let's get this way. How bad can it be? And, you know, if the kids get a bit scared, then it doesn't matter, you know, because we're all old enough to deal with it. But uh, but really, the real blame obviously has to be paid, uh, pointed towards the adults here. What on earth are the nuns doing? Slapdash nuns saying, oh, yes, uh, we trust you to just uh, go, go off and get in a video and watch whatever. Also, man at the video store, or whoever's behind the counter there, just, yeah, there you go, have an X-rated movie. Uh, so it's, it's, it's their fault. It's the system, once again, working against the school children. And for that reason, I'm going to forgive. Hey, Matt, you're a nun and you've let... Anyway. <laughs> uh, people's verdict, please. Do you forgive Fiona? Yes or no? 61054 on the text. Just before the news, uh, we had Thursday's confession from Fiona, not her real name. She was a, a, a boarder at a convent school and because she was one of the older girls, managed to convince the mother superior to set up a video club. The deal was, you certificates only, she rented The Exorcist with predictable consequences. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the people's verdict is in. Here it comes. So Josh says, totally forgive this one. As Matt would say, isn't it the system? Why did the video rental store say that some schoolgirls could rent The Exorcist? And why didn't the nuns check the movie? So many failures here. It's not Fiona's fault. Uh, Neil in West Wickham says, forgiven. Me and my mates did something very similar with The Exorcist involving younger schoolmates. We also showed them The Omen. And Tom in Aberdeen... The thing is, can I just say... It was illegal. Yes. That was also the thing. <laughs> yeah. It actually was against the law. Yeah, you couldn't do, do it. Stuff, yeah. uh, finally, Tom in Aberdeen says, Forgiven, I'm sure the kids found the experience enriching. It is actually a very well-made movie. I don't think that's, that's the point the if point. you're showing it to primary Tom. school children. That's the whole point of the BBFC. Uh, OK, thank you. If you have a confession, we'd like to see it, please send it to confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk.